Hello, hello! Welcome to our Tappy Circle for today. Um, thank you for being here with me. Um, if somebody will, um, as always, just drop in a chat real fast that you can see me and hear me just so I'm aware um, and I can let that thought go that I'm talking to myself. <laughs> um, if you were part of our 21 day tapping challenge, today was the end of it. We just did, I am just finished the live for that. Um, so I haven't had time to put my tapping dots on yet. Uh, so I'm just gonna do it here live with you. So uh, thanks for being here with me. Uh, let me know. Oh, thank you, Jackie. Oh, I love you too. Uh, Jackie is um, a long time friend of mine. We've known each other uh, since high school. So it's so fun to see her on here with me. So the inside of the eyebrow point, and I am just using a washable marker. If you ever tap, with kids or just with people um, like me who love to play, this is a really fun thing to do. Even if it's just you by yourself, having a creative outlet, um, something, you know, sometimes even in doing something that's good for us, we hesitate, right? Um, finding something that feels, feel, feels whimsical or exciting or fun or silly can help release that intense heavy weight of, oh, but what I'm doing is serious and it's a big deal. And if you're like, oh, but I'm going to draw with a marker all over my face, you know, it, um, it can help set a different tone and take some of that pressure off. So, and these, these wipe off really easy with water. So it's, it's, I just, I'm using Crayola and I, I will say this, there are some markers out there that say they're washable and they're not. Don't find that out by putting it on your face first. If you buy an off-brand marker, um, I think the ones that I'm talking about, I got at the dollar store. So uh, test it first uh, before you do any of this sort of a thing. So I have my spots pretty well memorized, um, but I always like to check. Um, at some point I'll bring out my tool that shows like it, it buzzes when you're over. I did a video on it, but it was a while ago. It's still on the YouTube channel, um, but you'd have to kind of look for it in my playlist. It was one of the first videos um, that I ever did. So, all right, now I've got my dots. Um, Janet, I'm glad that you're here too. Thank you for being here. And thank you for commenting and, and letting me know. All right, uh, this was a week that was busy with questions and requests. So I've got multiple things uh, that I will bring up from our community members that sent me an email. I think I can tilt this down a little bit. Let me see, okay. Um, but before we get into that, let's ground and center with each other. I know my energy is a little bit like, <laughs> and I don't wanna lead you into tappy with that because this is not meant to be a sprint. So. I'm going to calm myself down a little bit. <sighs> and just focus in on your body. How is it feeling? Do you need to shift a little bit, adjust, move to a different seat to feel comfortable? If maybe you're clenching somewhere, if your shoulders are up by your ears, just relax those, roll them around a bit. Maybe relax your back, allow yourself to have bad posture for a minute. Really relax all of your abdominal muscles, your back muscles, and just slouch. And then resettle back into a comfortable position, stacking your bones. And let's take a breath. And let's take a moment to connect with each other. And let's do that by going into our heart space, just into this, this infinite space that we all have that we can connect through. So even though we are all over the world, all experiencing very different lives, we're here together in purpose. And here together in this purpose, we truly can reach out and support each other and touch each other and share experience with each other. And while we're here in this space with each other, let's set our intentions for this time together. That as we tap, we'll have the realizations that we need to help us pass whatever block is showing up for us right now, whether we're aware of it or not. And that if you are eager to put 
you know, uh, what you're tapping on in the chat, that whether we get to it or not in this session, you are seen, you are heard, you are loved, and you are supported in this community. And that even if your specific issue isn't tapped on today, that you will still receive the insights and the forward movement that you are looking to get by coming here today. Let's take another breath together. <sighs> oh, that's so much better. <laughs> My energy, I get so excited and, and I just ping so fast outside of my own body. So whew, that's better. Okay. So I am going to go to the um, email request that I got. And I'm super excited about these topics. One of them in particular is going to allow me the opportunity to, te to teach you a new technique today. I'm really excited about that. But go ahead and place what you want to tap on um, in the comments. Um, and I see a question here, and I'll answer that in just a second. Um, so that uh, when we get to that point, then, then we'll have them ready to go. Um, Kate, I am reading the YouTube comments. So I see uh, you typing in that question and I will address it verbally. Um, so like what we just did. So, <laughs> um, happy to have you too, Patricia Ann. Let's see. <gasps> Yay, Marty. Oh, I'm so glad that helped you get through your dental work. I, so funny thing. After the session last week, I had dental work too, but mine was right after. I mean, I had to run out the door to go be there on time. And I didn't realize until I was sitting in the parking lot, I hadn't washed my dots off. <laughs> so I walked in and I was just, hi. Uh, but I went in the bathroom and, and rinsed them off. And they're a great group of people. They wouldn't judge me for it anyway. But sometimes I walk around with this and forget that I didn't remove them. Uh, okay. so. One of our community members, um, Sneha, uh, asked that we tap on judgments. And what she said is it's easy to tell ourselves to stop judging ourselves and others, but how do we do it? And um, if you don't have a foundation for it, then how do you find it? So I think this is a great question because I, I think we're told a lot, stop judging people, uh, but the actual pathway to it isn't very clear, right? So we're going to start tapping on the hand point here. And if you're new to our community, welcome. Uh, I don't explain tapping here. I don't go into um, the, the scientific backing or anything of it. But if you just follow along with me, uh, then you'll get the basis of it. And there's a lot of explanations on the YouTube channel that you can go and explore to learn more about it. But here it's just all action. You're gonna really experience it. I have to tilt this back up so you can see the top of my head. And these dots I have on here are just kind of a pathway. If you just mimic what I'm doing, you're gonna get it and you're gonna be great, okay? Even though I am confused about how to release judgment, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have a desire to be less judgeful, but I don't have a pathway on how to do that, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I've placed pressure on myself to have the ability to release judgment without having the tool to know how to release it, I still choose to deeply and completely accept myself. <sighs> Knowing how to not judge Not knowing how to not judge. Believing that not judging is really what I should do. OK, 
because maybe there's a part of me that feels like sometimes judgment is useful. But then I hear judgment is bad. Confusion about judgment. Well, if something can be good and bad, and I'm wondering where exactly that line is, maybe it would be helpful to get more clear on my definition. My definition of judgment. What is my definition of judgment? Well, judgment is when I look at someone externally or I look at myself internally and decide something about it. Well, how am I supposed to stop doing that? In that description, judgment sounds an awful lot like making decisions. or assessment. Is this judgment that is bad something different? What if I define judgment as what comes after a decision? or after an assessment? What if what I call judgment is how I feel about what I think? I skipped this point, sorry. How I feel about what I think. because I do have a lot of feelings, some that I really would like to shift. But I also have a lot of feelings that I feel are very valid that I should hold on to. So if this is my new definition of judgments, how do I decide what feelings I'm going to validate? Validating my feelings. What feelings of mine am I going to allow? And what feelings of mine am I going to deny? Denying my feelings? Is that what feels right? I wonder if there's a different way to look at that. What if whatever I feel, whatever judgment comes up is information? What if it's information, not good or bad, it's information. And maybe it's a negative emotion but negative emotions can be information. And it's my emotion. So maybe it's for me. <sighs> okay, all of that sounds good in theory, but how would that work? How would I do that? So let's imagine a scenario together. Let's say there's a person in front of us, someone that we already know we enjoy, 
but then they say something, express an opinion or a value or a decision, and we have a reaction to it that's negative. We don't agree with it. We don't approve of it. Um, we don't believe what they've said because we've seen them not hold to their own truth in what they just said before. So this person in front of me just said something and I'm having a negative emotion about it. That's a judgment. But I've decided that's information. What does this irritation or whatever word you want to use, mean for me? How is this information for me? Does it mean there's a boundary that I need to honor for myself? That maybe if they're asking for my help in this and it's put me in a bad position before, maybe this is a warning to myself of, let's not go there again. Let's not do that. Is it information telling me that this is triggering something inside of me that feels like a mirror or something that I did in my history that I haven't stopped judging myself for? And that's something that I need to allow myself forgiveness in. But whatever is showing up for me, I release the idea that it's bad. And I release the idea that I'm wrong for having it. And I accept that this is communication and information from my own body and my own brain to pay attention that there's something here that I need to be aware of. Whether it's a, a happy emotion or what I would classify as a negative emotion, it's an expression of collaboration from my subconscious brain. <sighs> Judgments. Knowledge, collaboration, releasing old beliefs about what judgments are, accepting new beliefs on what judgments are. Learning and identifying so that I can accept what this communication that I've been calling judgments means to me. And as I build this relationship, with my emotions, I deeply and completely accept myself. And as I allow this new perspective about what judgments are, I deeply and completely accept myself. And as I take steps to learn this new skill, which I may rock it at the very beginning, or I may really be bad at it <laughs> as I start to shift. I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay, let's breathe that in. <sighs> Such a good one. I love that we got to tap on judgments. Okay, and the next one from email uh, is from a community member named Carrie. And I love that she brought this up. She said, I do not trust myself subconsciously. And where it sits for her is all around food. 
um, that when she wants to eat something, she's just constantly questioning, will it help me? Is this going to hurt me? Am I returning to old habits? Will I get enough of this? Is it the taste I want? Is it because it's a pleasurable activity or uh, is it something I really need? Is it only for my pleasure? Will I ever figure this out? Um, this type of, I, I've heard different phrases, mind chatter, mind chewing is so common, first of all. So Carrie, you are so not alone in this. Um, and while hers may be with food, you may experience this in a completely different way in doubting choices that you make, uh, maybe in relationships with other people, um, setting boundaries, um, moving forward into a next step with someone, parenting. Oh my gosh, that's a very common one to have all of these types of questionings with. So what I, what I hear in this, in this, um, inability to trust your own subconscious is um, having an outwards view of affirmation of, of this is where I should go. I, I need someone else to tell me. Um, and very often with this type of lack of trust, um, think of it as another person. Okay. So let's just say for right now, you're in um, a conversation with someone and they're telling you something, but this person has lied to you so many times. It's not that they don't know the truth. You know, it's not that they don't have this information. Um, just, they, they just go wild sometimes and, and they just go off. And, and so you're going, okay, well, I know, you know, the right answer, but is this the right answer? Are you telling me the truth? Are you pulling a joke on me right now? I'm waiting to hear if you've got a punchline, you know, I'm waiting to see if you're going to laugh at me if I go and try this. And it's not true. Um, there's a lack of trust of self. Um, and so a lot of times this goes deeper and spreads out further than just where this ending point is, where it's on fire, right? Which where it's on fire is the outcome. So tracing it all the way back is likely going to be a bit of a process. Well, we're going to start it here. Okay. So picture in your mind um, where you have a similar circumstance of where you struggle to trust your own conclusions in, in an area or in every area. That's where I was. <laughs> Just any decision I made. Is that true? Is it real? Is that the best one? Even though I struggle to trust myself and my decisions, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have almost no faith in myself and I always second guess my decision. Right now, I choose to deeply and completely accept myself anyway. Even though I feel discouraged and confused about why I can struggle so much over these decisions that I think should be not so difficult. I deeply and completely accept myself anyway. <sighs> Struggling to trust. Making the right decision. Knowing the right decision. Pass, fail in my decision-making. Judging myself for how well I choose. Basing my worthiness on my outcome. Why do I have so much pressure on this decision? It 
It's not because it feels so good inside. I wonder how I came to decide on this as my mode of activity for decisions. I wonder as I picture choosing something, whose voice do I hear? Whose face do I see? Is there a memory that pops up in my mind? I wonder, is this deeper and bigger than me just making decisions for myself? Not trusting myself. Well, of course I don't trust myself. We're going to say some wacky things here. Just go with me. I don't make good decisions. I make terrible decisions. I've made so many bad decisions. I've upset so many people in my life. And it is absolutely all my fault. 100%. That's not true. Maybe it feels true. I'm confused about how that feels and doesn't feel true. Even though I'm confused about this right now, I'm still choosing to deeply and completely accept myself. If I feel like I make bad decisions, I wonder where that came from. Did I tell myself that? Or did someone else tell me that? Have I made decisions in the past that other people judged me for? Where I felt embarrassed or ashamed or wrong or someone got angry, or someone left. Decisions that hurt my life. I wonder, there was some point in my life where I decided I wasn't safe to make decisions. If there's a point in my life where I decided I wasn't safe to make my own decisions, I forgive myself. I acknowledge that I did the best I could at that time in my life. And I allow myself forgiveness for holding on to that. Forgiveness for myself. So I wonder where to go from here. Maybe, maybe I can start to build that relationship back with myself. Maybe I can include my own self in my decisions and what matters to me. And there may be other people that I genuinely want to include. There may be other people in my life that I feel like I need to please with this decision. (sighs) 
however, or whoever else is included in this decision. I agree right now to include myself. Including myself in my decision. Allowing myself a voice. But what if that voice makes the wrong choice? What if I make a really bad decision? Well, what is a really bad decision? Maybe I've defined it in the past as when someone reacts to it poorly. And that's not what I want to have happen. Reactions to my decision. Other people's reactions to my decisions. Well, I can control the way they respond to my decisions. I just have to choose what they want. That allows me control, right? Even if I choose to completely ignore myself and do only what the other person wants, that does not assure that I'll get the outcome that I'm looking for. And maybe that's why I don't trust myself because I haven't had a voice. I mean, maybe I've asked myself, hmm, what do I think? But then maybe I've immediately said, oh, be quiet. I'm going to do what they want. If there was another person doing that to me, I wouldn't communicate with them much. So maybe I've decided to stop communicating with myself because of this treatment. And it's possible that as I include myself in my decisions, other people aren't going to like it. There's a good chance if I've been doing just what someone else wants me to and I stop, they're not going to like it at all. <laughs> and the way they react may be hurtful. And the way they react may not be what I want. And that's okay. It's okay for me to be sad or hurt or angry or disappointed or any other emotion that pops up because things didn't go the way I wanted them to. But that decision really isn't up to me. It never really was. And I'm ready to include myself back into making my decisions. So what does that look like? How do I, how do I start that conversation with myself? How do I start that relationship back? <sighs> Starting this relationship with my own voice in my decisions. Maybe it's one decision at a time and I just pause. I pause for the Answer, I pause for the conversation. Maybe it's validating whatever is offered. Even if it's going against a craving that I'm having 
or information that someone else has given me. Maybe it's giving in to a craving. It may be after I give in to that craving, I regret it. <laughs> and that's okay. It's just another conversation. I can re remind myself and say to myself, oh, hey, well, here's the outcome to that. Let's consider this next time we're in this space. Maybe if I see this as a relationship and conversation, making decisions won't seem so scary. And it's okay if sometimes I make the wrong choice, even on purpose. Because I'm learning. And right now I'm choosing to learn with myself. And that feels really good. And as I learn to make decisions with myself and examine the outcome, see if it got us where we wanted to be, and implying that to the next decision, I allow myself the full range of my ability or inability, my excitement, my insecurity, whatever it is that pops up as I allow myself to learn this skill and develop this relationship, I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay. <sighs> yes. <laughs> that, was, that one was exciting for me. Um, I feel like that's a really important point of empowerment. So thank you for that, Carrie. All right. So we've got two more from emails to tap on, um, but both still really good ones. So one more, and then I'm going to teach you the new technique, um, and then I'll go to the chat. Okay. So... I'm just scanning it. Okay. Um, in this person, I, I didn't get their permission to say their name, so I'm going to be vague about it. Um, but I was asked about um, doing a tapping for skeptics. So for people who I'm not really feeling a difference when I tap, it's not working, uh, I'm not really sure I believe in it, um, what can be done for that? Um, first of all, if you're feeling any degree of that, you're so not alone. Um, that just there is um, can be a tactic from the subconscious brain to protect you from change because discouragement is a really great way to get us to stop doing something, right? Well, it's not making a difference. I'm not going to waste my time on it. I'm not going to waste my effort on it, right? Um, it could be um, just a matter of gaining the skill, right? Uh, it can be a matter of recording yourself because our brains, gosh, they're so amazing. You can have a life altering shift and 20 minutes later, you're like, yeah, so what? Because your brain's already integrated it and it's just not a big deal anymore. Like that's insane to me. So it's really easy to feel discouraged uh, when, when things start to make subtle shifts. If you haven't kept a record of where you were a week ago and you've tapped on it, and now you're here, your brain is going to invalidate all of those huge shifts and not to be a jerk, uh, but because it's just not important anymore to remember where you were because it's not where you are anymore. And those, those literal physical neuron pathways in your brain aren't there anymore because it's saying, oh, that's taking up excess room. We don't need that bridge there. So it'll remove it and put that space to good use elsewhere. So if you had a fear of spiders and bugs and birds and trees and cats, and you go through and you break all of those, and all of a sudden you're on a nature walk and you're walking around and a cat goes across the path and you're swatting away a bee um, and you see a spider web you know, somewhere and the person you're with is like, who are you? Like, how are you okay right now? It's very likely that you aren't gonna be like, <gasps> My gosh, you know, it'll be more like, oh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's not bothering me so much right now. I mean, I don't want to touch the spider web, but I don't, it's over there. Like, why, what, why would I care? Um, 
so it's really easy to invalidate any progress. So keeping those things in mind help. But let's say that's not the issue. Okay. Um, let's tap on, I don't see it. I don't feel it. I don't believe it. Okay. For tapping specifically. Even though when I try tapping, I don't notice any difference. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though when I tap, I know I don't really believe it. And I don't think it's going to help. I still choose to deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I don't see any progress with the effort that I've put into this, I deeply and completely accept myself. And we're going to stay on this point and we're going to say some range of things. So stay with me on it. Well, of course, I'm not seeing any difference because nothing's going to help. I am a lost cause. There's nothing that's ever going to change this. It's medical. It's resolute. It's a part of who I am. It's a part of my life. It's a part of my soul contract. It's a part of uh, karma. It's a part of things that are out of my control. It is out of my control for this to be different. So therefore, tapping on my hand and saying things to my brain will never make a difference. It will never change because I don't have the ability to change it. <sighs> Sorry, saying all of that is hard. Um, but if there's any part of you that believes that, it's really important to say it at the same time that you're tapping. Even if it's like half a percent, oh, giving it a voice is really important. And then tapping at the same time because you're asking your brain to consider it. If it's something that you're afraid of, you're like, oh, I don't want to say that because I know I think it's true. That's when you need to say it the most. Okay. So that's what all of that negative blah, saying that is for. Okay. And if your brain was like, oh, but I don't believe that. No way. Gross. Uh, then that's great. You want to encourage that too. You want to your brain to go, hey, we're fighting against this. That's a good thing. And if there's parts of you that are like, oh, finally, she said it. Um, that's also a positive thing. Okay. Because that's the first step and allowing it to, to shift. So that's why we do that. Now to jump back into it. Things will never get better. Things will never change. It's all out of my control. It's all out of my power. And tapping will never work for me. Boy, I wish it would. It would be really nice to have something that worked. I really wish something would work because it feels really sad to be so helpless. It feels really discouraging to feel so hopeless. But even though I feel so sad and so helpless and hopeless about this, I still deeply and completely accept myself. Because you know what? Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm right that this will never change. Maybe this will be a constant in my life. And if that's true, I accept it. And I don't accept it because I like it. I don't accept it because, gee, this seems like the best choice for me. No, I accept it 
because I'm done fighting it. I'm done choosing it as the reason I don't get to move forward in my life. I'm done with choosing it as the reason everything else doesn't work. Because even if I'm right, that this thing is never going to change and that tapping is never going to work. It doesn't have to be my ultimate definition. This doesn't have to be the biggest part of my story. There are other people who have struggles that are similar or even bigger than what I face. And I don't mean to compare myself to them but to see them as an inspiration for what they've overcome. And what's the difference between me and them? How have they overcome it? I can very clearly see that some of them have barriers that will never change. So how did they not be defined by it? Maybe they just made the decision to not be defined by it. Maybe they made the decision for it not to be their complete definition. What is my definition? What is my story? Am I the person that nothing ever works for? Am I the person that's so uniquely cursed that I don't get to find solutions ever? Is that who I've decided to be? Well, I don't decide it. No one would choose that. That's insulting to think about, that I would choose to define myself that way. It's just the truth. Nothing ever works out for me. Whether I believe that I've chosen this definition or it's something that was chosen for me and I had no choice, I deeply and completely accept myself. Because the truth is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that if before this very second, I chose it or it chose me, I can decide in this moment on what I want to choose now. I can decide where I focus. I can decide what story I want to tell. And will this thing still get in my way? Maybe. Maybe it will still be a struggle to find ways of releasing that work. Maybe it will still be a struggle to reach the amount of success that I really would like to have, that I see in my brain. And maybe that's okay. Maybe it's okay that I have really big aspirations and goals. But judging myself for having that and not reaching them right now isn't helpful. So maybe the part of that that needs to be released is the judgment. Okay, so I changed my story. I released the judgment. But what about healing? I really want this to work for me. I wonder, do I need to give myself permission to heal? Do I need to give myself permission to find something that works? I wonder, have I given myself the support that I need? 
Maybe what I need is to work with another person. I mean, am I an expert in this? Even if I am an expert in this, can I be both roles at the same time? Let me tell you a little secret. Dr. Church himself does EFT sessions with other people. Even he doesn't do both practitioner and client at the same time, all the time. So when I determine that something isn't working, maybe I can be curious about it. Maybe I can hold space that it's not that I'm broken or this thing doesn't work, but that I just haven't found how it's going to work for me yet. Maybe I need to tap while I'm taking a really nice bath. Maybe I need to tap while I'm listening to music. Maybe I need to try tapping while I'm not focused on anything else and I'm just watching my favorite movie or TV show. Well, these ideas are weird. How is that going to help? I don't know. But I'm open to finding a way that will. And it's okay for me to try. I can try all the things. Giving myself permission. Permission to heal. Permission to try. And permission to be who I am, whether all of it works or none of it works. And I deeply and completely accept myself. <sighs> okay, I'm feeling really good about today. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if it's just that I need this, or it, just, it feels like this is moving a lot of energy. And I feel like that's it's more than just me. So I, I hope that's true. I hope this is helping um, all of you as well. So, man, this is going by fast. Okay. Um, Yeah, I, I'm going to teach you guys this technique. It's going to be a, it's going to be a, 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 what's the, what's the phrase? A quick course, crash course. Oh my gosh, that is so ironic that that's what I chose to say. Um, but it, it's a really specific, important technique and we'll do it real fast. Um, I'm so sorry I didn't get to anything in the chat today. Um, email me, bring it back up next week. Um, I love you so much. Um, I promise you're not ignored. Uh, I hope that this has been useful and helpful anyway. Um, okay, so jumping into this. So we have a community member named Troop D. And uh, what she wrote in about is feeling anxiety about driving. But this is specific to um, an experience that she had. So when she was 17, she's now 40, um, she was in a car accident. And... Um, naturally her brain had a response to that. And then she had another accident two years ago, um, which I'm guessing exasperated um, what's left over from when she was 17. So that long of a time, when you have a traumatic encounter, your brain is going to go, oh no, we need to protect you. And it's going to stay in survival mode unless you say, oh no, we're okay now. We're, we're out of that experience. We can relax, which almost no one knows how to do, by the way. This, this helps you get out of that. Um, so if you don't have that information, if you don't have that support, then your brain just continues to, okay, how do we stay safe? How do we stay safe? And it will link just more and more things. That's how a lot of, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, fears related to something that you haven't had a bad experience of. What's that called? Uh, like a fear of elevators, a fear of spiders, a fear of dogs, um, a fear of heights. Maybe you've never fallen off of something high before, but you're terrified of it. Uh, oh, I almost had it. Anyway. Um, your brain will, will start to connect things that aren't logically connected, but her seems like a very logical connection. She's, she just still has a really high anxiety about driving. So, um, a great way to unhook this is called the movie technique. Um, and it's something that you can look up. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Dr. Church has a video on it, um, on our YouTube channel already. It's also in the EFT manual. 
Um, but the way it works is you take a specific occurrence where you have had something happen and you go through it. Now, if it's too overwhelming and traumatic to relive it in your head, then you put it up on a movie screen. Like you're, you're watching it on your computer, on your phone, um, you're in the back row of a movie theater, however far away you need to get it to where it feels like it's okay for you to experience it and not be overwhelmed by it. And you rewind it to a point where you were fine. And then you you go forward and you you tap and what, we'll do this together. Um, it'll be a little tricky how we're going to do it together, but we're going to try. Uh, you go forward into it to a point to where you get a spike of anxiety. And it could be, um, I saw, we're going to, so with Troop T's experience, um, the car incident, and I don't know exactly how it went for her, but I saw the car start to move. Um, I felt my stomach clench. You know, I remember turning my head, whatever it is, it's something in my body, something that I smelled, something that I heard, something that I saw um, that, you know, oh, I'm feeling a spike. Okay. What is it? I'm at a six. You stop, you pause the movie and then you go, even though I feel at a six with seeing the car start to turn, I deeply and completely accept myself, even though I feel really anxious about, so you, you tap that down and you focus just on that. The nine gamut is really good to do on that, especially if it's like really high and you're, nope, it's not moving at all. Uh, if you don't know what the nine gamut is, there are videos on our YouTube channel for that. So you tap that down. Okay. Ooh, that feels released. Now you go back to the beginning, you rewind the movie and you go back to that point before you had any anxiety and you watch it again. And you go back to that point where you felt that first spike. Okay. You go to that spike. You feeling okay. Yeah. That feels fine now. Okay, cool. You keep going. Right. Oh, okay. Now, now, now this has happened. Okay. You stop and you tap and you do that as many times until you're at the end of that experience. Okay. And that can take a long time. It can be overwhelming. You can shorten it to where you go, okay, what are the top three peaks so that you're not tapping on this for like two, three hours if it was an extended experience. Okay. Um, and then you go back through and you go, okay, are those three peaks gone? What are the next three or what's the next biggest peak? Uh, you can piece it out so that it's not such a big thing to deal with. And then if you're like, I'm done tapping on this, but I'm not through with everything that triggered me here. You just set it down and you go, okay, well, I've made progress on this. I'm not done with it, uh, but I can come back to it later. And I'm really proud of the progress I have made. Okay. So let's try this. I'm going to be so vague about it um, because I want you to be able to plug it in. So pick an experience, um, not your most intense traumatic thing. Pick something small, like a pet peeve. Like you go to the fridge and you open up the butter container and there's crumbs in there and you're just like, oh. Um, for me, mine would be, um, going to the stove and there's grease all over it. You know, um, I cooked something, someone else cooked something and we didn't clean it up. And now I'm going to cook something new and there's, it's dirty. There's grease spots on it. That just, every time I see that I go, Ugh. so that's what I'm picking. So something super simple. Okay. So my beginning point would be, so we start tapping. And if you want to close your eyes as you're picturing it, that's totally fine. Um, so I'm going to see myself walking into my kitchen, getting things ready to cook. And I turn to put the pan on the stove and ugh, there's the grease. Okay. I'm feeling a spike and I know it's when I see the grease. So now I have the point. I'm going to open my eyes. All right. So where does that spike me to? To a six. Okay. Even though I'm at a six with seeing the grease on the stove top, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though seeing this grease is really annoying to me, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though this is something that I feel a lot of annoyance in, in seeing this grease, I deeply and completely accept myself. Seeing the grease, the grease on the stove. Why does this irritate me so much? It's not even really in my way. Hmm. I feel like it means I'm not honoring what I have. I feel like it means I'm sloppy and I'm not a good person and people would judge me if they saw it. I feel like it means I'm not clean. Um, and I feel like that means I'm unworthy in a way. 
all of these feelings and judgments that I have about the grease on the stove. Releasing the judgments about the grease on the stove. Because in reality, everything in my life that I could judge myself on or that really matters, the grease isn't that big of a deal. And it's okay if it bothers me. And I may or may not do better about cleaning it up. But I can release these judgments that I'm holding and this spike of irritation about it. I'll just clean it. Or maybe I won't. But either way, I won't feel this way about it anymore. I choose to release that. Okay, now I'm feeling better about it. I'm going to take a breath. <sighs> okay, so now I'm going to go back. I'm going to tap and I'm going to close my eyes. I see myself walking into my kitchen, getting the stuff ready to cook. I turn to my stove and I see the grease. Now, yeah, I could care less. I don't feel anything at all about it now. So I set my pan down. Uh, actually, I decide to clean it up. So I'm just going to, I'm going to move my pan. I'm going to grab my sponge real fast, wiping it down. And I see that clear, clean countertop space. Yeah, now I'm going to set my clean pan down on my clean stove. Ta-da, it's done. And I feel so much better. And that's how you can utilize that technique. So if you have something specific like that, um, you can go through and do that. Um, you can write down what it is and see the triggers, write down your SUD score, because revisiting it later um, could be really important for you to see how far you've come. And when you get into that situation again, um, so for you, Troop D, when you get into your car, if you do this movie technique and you go and you sit in your car, you can tap and go, okay, I'm sitting in my car and I'm about to drive. Where am I on this? Um, and that combined together can really start to make a difference in your experience. So, ah, we're out of time. We're over it. I didn't even get to read everything that you guys said. Ah, oh, today went so fast. All right. Um, so I'm I'm going to end the live so that you don't feel like you have to be here anymore. Um, but let me know how everything went for you today. Um, let me know how you felt about that I I went through stuff that were in emails and I didn't go through the chat. If you felt invalidated, I, I want to know because um, maybe I can balance that better. Maybe I'll do half and half. Um, I, I just I want you to know that you're heard and you're seen. And I want you to, um, when you show up, feel that you got um, something out of it. So please give me feedback either way. I want to know, um, so that I can show up to support you in my best. Uh, if you're, if there's something that you want to express, um, something you want to tap on that you don't want to put in the, in the comments, um, please feel free to email me. My email is amanda at eftuniverse.com. Um, have a wonderful week. I love you so much. I will have you in my mind and in my heart, and, uh, I will see you next Tuesday. Thank you for being here with me. Take care. Where is my mouse? There it is. Okay. Bye.